Placino. Placino. It's close though. It's good. From Bottle Rocket, he has over 11 years of experience. I know he doesn't look like it, right? We both look like we're y'all's age, right? No. No, okay. He has over 11 years of experience <coughs> in the recruiting industry. That's something you might not know a lot about. You're going to learn about it today. So all eyes up here, and I'm watching. Thank you, Christina, for that introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? Good, how are you? Awesome, awesome. My name is Julian Placino, and I am the recruiting lead for Bottle Rocket Studios. So before we jump into what we're going to discuss today, I wanted to first share just a little bit more about what exactly Bottle Rocket is and what exactly do we do. So Bottle Rocket, in essence, we are a world-class mobile application developer. So we build apps that live on your mobile devices, for your iPhone, for your tablets, and we're really, really good at it. We're kind of this interesting mix of a creative agency and also software development company, which I know a lot of you people are going to want to do, right? And we've made some incredibly world-class mobile applications. So you might not have heard of Bottle Rocket before, but you may have seen a lot of the apps that we've actually built. So if you've heard of Chick-fil-A, the Food Network, WWE, ESPN, Food Network, History Channel, we have more than 400 apps in the App Store and also the Play Store. That's cool, right? So instead of building software just behind the corporate veil, our stuff is available for everyone to download which is cool. And a lot of the talent that we've attracted to Bottle Rocket really likes that because you get to apply your particular gifts and expertise to these amazing world-class brands. And that's exactly what we do at Bottle Rocket. Does that make sense? All you guys have phones, right? Yeah. yeah? Okay, you have apps? All right, cool. So we made that connection. So I want to show you kind of what it looks like to be in the studio, right? So we don't have a normal office environment where there's high-rise crews, uh, high-rise cubes and people wear suit and ties every day. This is a creative agency. So what you're looking at is an environment that's really based on collaboration and also creativity, right? So this is actually the legendary app wall that we have. And that's really significant because where some companies can charge a certain amount for apps, we can charge a premium because of the experience that we have and user experience and also software engineering. This space here is actually 10 forward. I don't know if there's any Star Trek fans out there, but there's a lot of kind of references to Star Trek and Star Wars and also Lord of the Rings and how we name things at Bottle Rocket, right? So this is the center point of the studio. It's a place where we socialize, where we gather, some people work here, some people play here. It's just a great multifunctional space within the studio. This is Ryan Gant, he's one of our very talented Android engineers, I'm sorry, it's, uh, iOS engineers. And you can see he's on a scooter, right? So we didn't take that picture just because to show off. So this studio that we're in is actually four times the size of our previous studio. And we kept all this industrial flooring so we could ensure that we could transport ourselves back and forth to where we need to be on scooters, right? That's pretty cool. And also you'll see here, I know it's kind of fuzzy here, it's a little bit clearer on the other side, but this is what the typical office environment looks like. When you guys think of an office environment, what do you guys think of? You think of cubes, you think of suit and ties, what do y'all think of? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right? I wear jeans, this is really dressed up for me today, man. I'm in sweats, I'm in a hoodie, I'm in tennis shoes. It's like, it's like a creative dream, right? And down here is actually what we call Cloud City. So in the back you'll see a, a bookshelf. And it's not just any bookshelf. They're books that were volunteered by individual rocketeers of books that have changed their lives in the course of their career, which is cool, right? And that's Trenton Duke. He's one of our former Android developers. Uh, on the other side, what he's looking at is a giant big screen. We have an Xbox 360, a PlayStation 4, Nintendo Wii, all that kind of jazz, right? So we expect the best from our people, and we also provide the best. So what exactly is a recruiter? What do I do? How do I tie into technology? So you can think of a recruiter as a kind of a talent scout. I've helped thousands of people land successful careers in technology all over the country, right? 
So it's like I can see the best practices of people who, who find jobs and successfully build careers. And that's what I want to do here today. And at Bottle Rocket Studios, where I've been for the past six years, I've hired over 600 rocketeers in technology, creative, project management, just a litany of incredibly talented people. So why passion matters? So Bottle Rocket is a little bit different than other companies in the sense that we really believe that it's not enough to get a job, but to build a career that you are passionate about, something you get excited of, right? And we don't just talk about it. We create specific opportunities for all of us rocketeers to play and live out our passion. So once a year, we do something called rocket science which is essentially kind of a hackathon, right? So instead of working on projects that bring the company in money, we get to play and build whatever it is that we want. It's an amazing thing to experience. And I want to play for you a short video of what that looks like at Bottle Rocket. It's one of those things that you have to experience it to believe it. So you're probably thinking, so that's cool, so finding your passion, how, how has that made an impact in people? How does that change the course of your career? Well, I want to share a little bit about how Bottle Rocket, and also finding my own individual passion, changed the course of my personal, professional, and entrepreneurial career. So as really amazing as Bottle Rocket is, and again, I've been there for six years now, right? I've always secretly dreaded it. You know, I'm one recruiter out of a multitude of these amazing builders who've got great skill sets in software engineering and creative, and I just, I didn't want to look stupid to put my idea out there, right? I was afraid. But like after four years of working at Bottle Rocket, this idea that's perpetuated in the company of do meaningful work, find your passion, it finally sunk in, and I surrendered to this idea. So, you know, I asked myself, so what, what would it look like if I found my passion? Well, something that I've always deeply enjoyed was conversation. I love getting to know interesting people and learning from their successes. And something that I knew when I'd have these kinds of conversations with my mentors, with my teachers, was that value was being created in the form of advice, specialized knowledge, and even entertainment. So then I figured, okay, so what if I capture these conversations and then I share them with other people to see what kind of value that might add? So in March of 2016, my rocket science project is I launched a podcast called The Pathways to Success. Does anyone here listen to podcasts? Do you know what I'm talking about? So podcast is kind of like an internet radio show, right? So I did that and I interviewed experts on leadership, personal development, health and fitness. I've spoken with CEOs, company founders, leading entrepreneurs, American Ninja Warriors, New York Times best-selling athletes, just a litany of amazing people. And fast forward to present day, the show has been downloaded more than 40,000 times. It has a perfect five-star rating in iTunes. I now have a regular listening audience from over 12 
countries. Not bad for following your passion, right? So in addition to the success metrics of the podcast, I got sponsored. A company called Compete Every Day. They're a global lifestyle fitness apparel brand. And for me, not having any kind of back background in broadcast, I was so flattered that any company would associate their brand with what I do. And then it happened again. A company called Focusrite. They're a multi-million dollar audio products group. And what's interesting about Focusrite is that they, they typically only sponsor professional musicians or product reviewers. I'm none of that, but they saw the merit in what I was doing and the intensity that I put forward towards my work. So check this out, this is crazy. So a talent agency reached out to me, right? And of course, I have zero expectations in any of this kind of work. But I went to go meet them, and then after one meeting, they signed me. I'm now a professionally represented actor and model from one of the premier talent agencies in the country. I've never acted or modeled a day in my life. But again, as a result of following my passion, these kinds of things happen. I don't know if you've seen this commercial before, but I'm actually the, your hired guy, right? So I'm in uh, Dallas County Community College's uh, recruiting video for tech. So what's funny is, did I turn off? Okay, what's funny is that when people see that commercial for the first time and then meet me for the first time, they're so surprised that I can say other things outside of, you're hired, right? So, which is pretty cool. So I say this all not to impress you, but to, to provide you very specific evidence and reasons of what's possible whenever you finally allow yourself to believe in yourself and the unique gifts and talents that you all have, and then take one step of courage to try something that you want to do, right? So let's dial this all back into P-Tech, okay? So here's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about technology. Who here is going to be in the technology industry? Most everyone in the room, right? In Dallas, Texas. Who plans on staying here after college or moving away? Plan of saying here, right? Okay, so a good majority of you guys. So these two charts were actually published by DallasInnovates.com two weeks ago. And essentially what it shows is the rapid growth of technology careers in the Dallas area, right? And also Dallas-Fort Worth specifically, out of all the regions in the country, we are the sixth largest technology workforce. And at Bottle Rocket specifically, I've never really had to try hard to find great people outside of DFW. If anything, I've relocated people from all over the country, the East Coast, the West Coast. Our development operations guy even came all the way from Hungary. So the team that we have is truly world class. So the one thing, I know charts scare me and I don't really get them, but I want one idea for you to get. If you continue along the path of a technology career and stay in Dallas by the time you graduate, you're gonna be okay, all right? Like the market is really good for technology <coughs> careers. So technology career paths. So one of the biggest misconceptions that I hear is what exactly is a technology career? When you think of a technology career, what do you think of? Shout it out, what kind of jobs? Computers, coding, computers and coding, right? So the biggest misconception is that most people think the only way to a technology career is through coding. Don't get me wrong, that is an incredibly important asset. And honestly, in 11 years of doing this, if you get good at coding, and you remotely have a nice personality, you will have to try to be unemployed by the time you graduate, I promise you that. But at the same time, there's multiple paths, and that's why I'm really big into you digging into your unique personalities and strengths because there's room for everyone, no matter what your skill set is in technology, and I wanna show you why. So there's three main categories of technology careers, okay? The first category 
are the people that make technology. So the coders and the people who write the software, iOS, Android, web, server, database, all that kind of stuff, right? And also there's designers, there's creative <coughs> people. Who are my creative people in the house right now? Artistic people. Awesome. We need you both. You guys, you guys are makers. It's the creative people and the software engineer that comes together to build amazing apps. If you have a great app but it looks ugly, are you gonna download it? Yeah. That's why you need both. I spit, I'm sorry about that, you okay? <laughs> All right. I get excited about this stuff. <clears throat> there is a huge category of people who support the business of technology, not the people that make it. Because think about this, right? A piece of software is great but you need a business to perpetuate it. You need human resources, you need recruiting, you need finance, you need operations. Does that make sense? And we'll dig into some examples here as well. And lastly, there's people who sell technology. Because you can have a great business, you can have a great product by developing it, but if no one sells it, you don't have a job. No one's making any money. And those are the main categories. So let's dial in really tight and give specific examples. I want you guys to take note, okay? What do they do? What school did they go to? And what did they major in, right? That's y'all's next step is college, right? This is important. So Bob Tim, he's an Android developer. Graduated from Texas A&M University. Emphasized, majored in computer science, computer program. Natalia Vargas. She's an artist, she's a designer, right? An artistic person. Graduated from UNT, majored in communication design. Here's an example of people who support the business of technology, okay? Grittier Garland is our office manager. She's responsible for ordering supplies, for managing facilities, making sure that everyone has what they need. Who here is like, has a personality where everything's gotta be clean and in the right place? Who's anyone like that? There we go. No. All right, she's going to be an office manager here in her, in her next job here with Water Rocket, right? So, <clears throat> so Hayden Wolf, he's a project coordinator. Who here is so meticulous about being on time? Yes. Who's really super organized and needs like checklists to get through their day? Anyone like that? You might be a project manager, okay? So, so project manager, what their job is, because once we build software, we have to deliver it on time and under budget. So project managers are responsible for managing that software development cycle and making sure it ships on time and under budget. They work with all the different teams and really manage these milestones and timelines, right? Jacob Hausler is a finance generalist, graduated from the University of Texas at Dallas, major in finance and accounting. Who here is really good with money? <laughs> Might be a project manager and a finance person, right? Okay, and that's what exactly what Jacob does. He manages the finances of the business, the profit and loss statement, making sure we have enough money to come in the company to sustain the business, right? And then lastly, Alex Craig. <coughs> Alex Craig is in sales, graduated from UNT, majored in logistics. Alex is a young guy. He's in his mid-twenties, and he's already sold millions of dollars for Bottle Rocket. So you see how they all work together? Do you see that? What else do you notice about this? Any observations? What? They all have a smile. They all have smiles, right? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's happy to be at Bottle Rocket, right? But the one thing I want to tell you is that it doesn't matter what background you have. As long as you tap into your inner gifts, and make them better and find ways to help people with it, anyone can build a career in technology. Got it? Mm -hmm. So what are the next steps? As a career coach, I'm supposed to give people advice, right? Well, it took me some time to think about this because it's like, you guys are ninth grade? No. Ninth grade, right? Well, I tried to think back to ninth grade and I sure as heck wasn't thinking about a career. I was thinking about my next steps. I was thinking about college. Is that what you guys are thinking? No. About college? Not even yet. Well, good, because the advice that I give you is gonna serve you at any step of your career, okay? I give this to adults as well as students. Number one is get to know yourself. And I mean this. Every single one of you in this room has unique gifts, and talents. 
And I'm not saying that to be inspirational. I'm saying that objectively because I've been a recruiter for 11 years and I've interviewed thousands of people. And now on the podcast, CEOs, entrepreneurs, fit, elite fitness athletes, just so many people. And every single person, I've always noticed a glimmer of genius in them, even if they didn't see it for themselves. Get to know yourself. Find the things that you like. Find the things that you don't like. Think about what are things that, what are things that people ask your help for, generally? What do people compliment you for? And you'll start to notice that some of these strengths that you have, that other people think it's just so bizarre that you have, it's nothing to you, because it's uniquely you. Get to know yourself. Number two, seek wise counsel. Look for people that you admire and think are successful. Meet them. Learn from them. They can probably tell you much more than I can share with you in the short amount of time here as possible. Find mentors as early on as you can. And then lastly, develop this habit. And please do not gloss over this. I'm giving you very concrete advice that people pay me thousands of dollars to give them. Do more than what is expected of you. Okay? When I see college graduates, there are thousands upon thousands ejecting into the marketplace every single semester. You know what that creates for you? Competition. How are you going to stand out? Because when a thousand computer science graduates come to me, I've only got maybe five or six jobs. So when I see someone with a degree, and I see another person with a degree, but he's made stuff, he's got an internship, he's got apps in the app store, he's really passionate about what he does, he has an online portfolio, which one of those am I gonna choose? Of course. And why is this a great time for you all specifically? Because the internet exists. You guys don't remember a time when the internet wasn't around, right? That is bananas for me to even think about. But here's why that's important. Because you can start building stuff now, way before you graduate. And you can show it to the world. So ladies and gentlemen, those are what I truly believe to be the pathways to success. Become self-aware, know your talents. Grow them, make them better through practical application. And then lastly, find a way to help other people with that. Thank you. Questions? You can clap, that's all right. <laughs> so, uh, we have time for questions? Yes, we have about six minutes. Six minutes, all right, I could have gone longer. What do you guys have? Anything. I'm one of those people who knows there is no such thing as a stupid question, okay? So please. Tell me, what can I answer for you? What questions? I have a question. Yes. These students have the opportunity, and they're just starting to graduate. Uh, they're just starting this path as ninth graders. They right. have an opportunity to graduate from high school with an associate's degree if they stay on track. Yeah. What would you think of that if you saw a kid with a high school diploma and an associate's degree at 18? What would you think of that kid? Astounding, and here's why. We hired a gentleman by the name of Riley Testa. Okay? He was in high school. He was our first ever high school intern. Now, we hire interns typically only in college because we want to get them right afterwards, right? Build a relationship with them, right? But he was 18 years old. He had, I think, uh, 50,000 followers on Twitter. And he invented some type of amazing algorithm at the age of 18. So it's stuff like that that will set you apart. I would absolutely find value in that. And you guys are in that program? They're in it. All of them. You're a step ahead. Yeah. Um, when you said you could start creating stuff, yeah. what do you do that? What do you want to do? Um, probably software developer. Okay. Are you learning to code right now? Okay. So as early on as you start, start figuring out which languages seem to draw you in. So there's front end, there's web development, there's Android, there's iOS. There's a lot of research there, but start building. There's so many free resources right now to learn how to develop, right? Find those and start making things. Now they have something called GitHub. GitHub, that's where a lot of software engineers put their code. That's where you can put your source code. That becomes your portfolio. Does that make sense? Did I answer your question? Yes. Okay. 
What was your original passion? You know, I'll be very honest with you. Here's the thing, I'll tell you the truth. When I graduated from college, I was super overconfident in my ability to go get a job. Because at that time, I built a very successful career in technology already, in retail, in management, in sales. I thought people were just gonna hand me a job as soon as I got my degree. That did not happen. I literally, from the time that I graduated from college to getting my first job, I was rejected 37 times in a row. <laughs> you know why? That's a lot. You know why? Because I didn't know what I wanted, okay? So the market, it doesn't seek generalization. It seeks specialization. And when you don't know what you want to do, it's hard to find a job. But what was really interesting about that whole process was I was learning the definitive steps to get a job by getting rejected all this time. And then the one job that finally made me an offer which I ultimately accepted was a company called Robert Half International, one of the most prestigious staffing companies in the world. So instead of spending every waking hour of my day trying to find a job for myself, I built a career out of helping other people do that. And that's what I'm doing right now. Yes? Like the, which part? The acting piece, the recruiting piece, or? Well, like everything that you do, is that what you put yourself doing as a kid? Heck no! All those people I showed you on the slide, I can guarantee you, with the exception of one, even while he was going to school, had no clue they were gonna end up the path, right? And that's the thing, man, nothing's solid in stone. Like all of us, all of your teachers, what I'm here trying to do is to help guide you in the right direction, but honestly, you have to make the decision. And how do you do that? You start figuring out the things that you're really interested in. Go play, <coughs> go experiment, make mistakes, but get to know you. Thank you. Everyone, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.